ladies and gentlemen, Capital G here and Commander Legends has arrived. Um, not that I have any hands on with the product yet. Um, British Columbia literally just banned gather in home gatherings between different households, so it's kind of hard to draft the set. Uh, especially since the wife doesn't play and my daughter is seven months old. So yeah, can't uh, draft it can't play it with anybody else so that and I also have to buy new tires so a couple of ends too many to be able to have hands on the product straight away but hopefully soon and I'll do a booster box bust once I have it in the meantime let us talk about our old friend here Larry Nevin Nevin Wall Urborg Tyrant um, of all of the uh, new commanders I think this is the one that kind of grabbed me the most an ancient, ancient character that we've never really seen in the story. Really, our only hint of it has been the um, Nevermall's disc and a few other cards with uh, flavor text referencing him. What we have here is an Esper Commander, 3-6. He is a zombie wizard, has hexproof of artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, so your opponents can't get him with artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. Uh, can't target him with any of those things. And when Nevenral, or Borg Tyrant, enters the battlefield, you get a tapped 2-2 zombie creature for token for each creature that died this turn. Sweet ETP. Uh, when Nevenral dies, you may pay 1, and when you do, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Uh, just like the disc. Um, so it's interesting, because he wants to do ETBs, but he also wants to die and take the whole world with him. Kind of tricky to build, really. I've been uh, working on this for a little bit. And uh, here's what I've come up with. Uh, starting with our artifacts. I don't have a lot of artifact ramp. Uh, usually something Esper relies on a lot is artifact ramp. Not running too much here. Running a commander sphere, so when I do blow up the world, I can get the card back. Running a dark steel ingot. Um, usually the three mana artifact ramps are kind of bad, but here, hey, we get to keep our dark steel ingot. Expedition map to get us some key lands. Running the i -Core Wellspring, so this gives us an ETB and an Enters a Graveyard ability of drawing a card. Michael Sink Wellspring does the same thing, except lets us get basic lands. Of course, if I'm running uh, Nevenral, I'm going to run his disc. Phyrexian Altar, um, thanks to the... I forget the person's name, um, but on the Facebook North America Commander group, Somebody pointed out this interesting interaction where if you end up generating more zombies than you need to sacrifice to get to recast uh, Nevenwall, you can basically sack everything to the altar, pay the one to blow up the world. Uh, well, you don't have to pay the one to blow up the world when he uh, when he's destroyed. So you sacrifice everything, have enough mana to recast him. And it's going to create an ever-increasing number of zombie tokens that you can, you know, stack to the altar and generate more mana. So this is an infinite mana combo. Um, infinite zombies combo. So, yes, a super, super powerful effect. And, hey, game ending if you manage to connect with this. Skyclave Relic, this new piece of uh, hardware coming in from Zendikar Rising. Uh, we do want to pay the kicker. This is always going to cost six because it's going to give us three mana rocks that are indestructible. That is exactly what he's calling for. Spicy piece here with Ugin's Nexus. We managed to get this down and blow up the world with Nevenwall. We get another turn. That also stops other players from extra turn shenanigans as well. Now, of course, the Wayfarer's Bobble to ramp us a little bit because Esper doesn't ramp very well. Moving on to creatures, um, running some gods. The nice thing about the gods is that they're generally indestructible. So we got Atrios, God of Passage. Uh, let's us return a creature that we own whenever a creature we own dies, comes back to our hand, unless an opponent pays three life. Also, Atrios Shroud, uh, Shroud Veil. Did we manage to get a coin counter in Nevenral? Yeah, we can do some sick things with that. Bantu, the Glorified. It says we can't attack or block unless a creature died under our control this turn. But it has its own sack outlet. 3 mana, 4, 4, 6 with indestructible, so of course. Distended Mindbender, he's here as a sack outlet. 
No one's going to see this coming. Uh, so the, the idea here is we get Nevin Roll out and then eventually cast this with the Emerge ability. So it would end up casting us double black. Uh, reduced by the creature's converted mana cost. So is it double black or is it just black? I have to double check. But either way, sacrificing Nevin Roll to um, bring in a distended Mindbender, we can target whatever opponent we think has answers and make them discard those answers. Erebos Bleak Hearted is here, of course, whenever our creatures die. Gives us a chance to pay some life and draw some cards. Also works as a sack outlet and is indestructible. The Failed Grief Familiar gains us a little bit of life and draws us a card when it hits the graveyard. Court Cartographer gets us any Plains card onto the battlefield tapped. Mikhail the Unhallowed um, turns out Nevenral is not a human, therefore we're giving Nevenral Undying. Seems like a good synergy. Uh, running the opposition agent um, to make up for our lack of ramp, we're gonna flash this in whenever someone sacks off their uh, sacks off their fetch lands. Phyrexian Rager comes into the battlefield, draws us a card, we lose a life. Pitiless Plunderer. Whenever another creature we control dies, we get a treasure. So we're hoping to kill off a bunch of our creatures and get some treasures. That'll help us cast some of our big effects. Reassembling Skeleton, just a recurring way of having a creature on the board that dies, so we can get our, our zombie tokens. Sailor of Means comes in, it ramps us, it gives us a treasure token. Thassa, being able to uh, blink is actually very powerful here, especially if we manage to, bring, to uh, blink Nevenral after some creatures die, gives us more tokens. The Scarab God, very, very handy reprint coming in from the double not double, yeah, double masters it was. So we get the scry X on the, based on the number of zombies we control. Uh, we get to exile a creature card from our graveyard, get a 4-4 black zombie copy of it. And whenever this dies, it just comes back to our hand. So we get to recast this over and over. Running Whisper. Yeah, this is a cool synergy. We sacrifice two creatures, one of them being Nevenral. Our Nevenral in the graveyard, sack two creatures, get Nevenral back, and get the ETB. Running Wonder, because Wonder, we can actually cast it, and then eventually, when we blow up the world, our tokens will fly. And Yeheni, a sweet, sweet sack outlet for us as well. A threat that gets bigger and can provide itself indestructible. For enchantments, um... My thinking is that we want Nevermore to die to blow up the world by paying the one, and then we want to bring it back from the graveyard. Same turn. So we want to play some cheap reanimation effects. So in this example, we'll be using stuff like uh, Animate Dead, Dance of the Dead, Gift of Immortality. This is a nice little freebie because once we put Gift of Immortality on Nevenral, then anytime he goes to the graveyard, we can pay the one, blow up the world, get him back, get the ETB trigger, and then the Gift of Raw Mortality will come back on him. So as long as he's not killed a second time over the course of the same turn, um, this is going to work for us. Kaya's Ghost Form, just another cheap way to protect our commander and let him blow up the world and come right back in. And also running the Rite of Bells and Lock. Uh, running this one to get the Cleric Tokens. We do want to generate some tokens and creatures onto the battlefield so that when Nevenral ends up uh, blowing up the board, we get those 2-2 uh, two, two zombies. Also, the fact that this gives us a 6-6 six, six flyer is also pretty sweet. Moving on to some instants. Um, even though Nevenral is really good at controlling the board, we do want some instant speed targeted removal just in case uh, someone decides to combo off before we do. Hence, we've got Anguished Unmaking to take down any permanent we must. Uh, Arcane Denial, just an easy splashable counter spell. Brought back, another way to uh, bring Nevenral back from our graveyard once it hits the yard. Running the Enlightened Tutor, we want to get our Phyrexian Altar if we can because that's our major win condition. Uh, Hero's Downfall, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Nevenral notably does not destroy planeswalkers. So we are running a couple spells that can target and remove uh, those pesky, pesky permanents. 
Long Road Home. I like Long Road Home. It says, Exile target creature at the beginning of the next end step. Return it to the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it. The idea here is that if somebody else wipes the board and we happen to have the open mana for Long Road Home, we only need 2 mana. Just blink uh, Nevermall. All the creatures get wiped. Nevermall comes back and gives us an army of zombies. Malakir Rebirth does a similar thing. Somebody wants to wipe the board, well, for one black mana and a couple of points of life. Uh, we'll get that creature back and we'll have an army of zombies. The fact that we can play this as a land if we must is also sweet. Mana Drain, double blue. It's just too good, especially with the new, with the new reprint on this. So, of course, let's run it. Uh, momentary Blink. Same deal. A few creatures die. If, uh, if uh, a few creatures die in combat, for example, we just blink out Nevernwall and get those zombie tokens. We can do it twice thanks to the flashback. Otherworldly journey, same as Long Road Home. Sacrifice. How is this spicy old card? Um, the art is a little a little dated. They're not obviously never going to make art that looks quite like this ever again. But still. Uh, one black to sacrifice ideally our Nevermall, get seven black mana as a result of that. So yeah, one of which we can spend to blow up the world, and the rest we can use to recast our commander. Uh, Swan Song, again, cheap, effective counterspell. Only gets instants, sorceries, and enchantments, but hey, why not? And of course, towards the plowshares, just instant speed takes something down. Vampiric Tutor is here. We, we just got a fresh reprint of this as well, so let's run it. If you crack it, run it. Uh, for lands, we're running the Arcane, Sig uh, Arcane Sanctum, Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage. Field of the Dead is here as another way to generate tokens for us. Notably with uh, Nevermall, um, it counts all creatures that die, including tokens. So if we have a zombie army already, and then we blow up the world, well guess what? We get them all right back once he comes down. Also, the fact that we have a land that generates us some uh, board presence. Well, he doesn't blow up lands. Nevermall does not blow up lands, so there you go. Forbidden Orchard. Uh, same logic, we're going to be giving our opponents 1-1 colorless spirits. That's fine, because we're going to blow them up and turn them into zombies on our side. Running uh, the shocks, so of course, Godless Shrine, Hallowed Fountain, High Market, amazing sack outlet for Nevi. Seven Islands, a Mana Confluence, buy a box promo. So these are going to be circling around. We're going to see a whole bunch of these. Morphic Pool. Of course, um, why not run the uh, why not run these lands, the Battle Bond lands? Um, the whole cycle is completed now, so we have every combination, two color combination. Uh, Phyrexian Tower. Again, amazing sack outlet. Ramps us up real fast. Six planes, a sea of clouds. Sunken Hollow. We're running seven swamps. One Temple of the False God. I know people don't like this card necessarily, um, but with how little ramp we're actually playing in this deck, having a land that taps for two um, seems worth the risk. Terramorphic Expanse, of course. Vault of Champions and Watery Grave. Gives us 38 lands. Again, we're not running a lot of ramp, so we're going to run a couple more lands than I usually like. Uh, going on to Planeswalkers, we're running three. Um, you could totally go Planeswalker Tribal with uh, with uh, Nevenwall, um, but I already run on a Matu for that, so I figure I'm only going to put a couple of Planeswalkers, including Obnixilis, the Hate Twisted. Um, don't think of him as creature removal. Think of him as a sacrifice outlet. Yeah, we can destroy our own creature to draw two cards, especially if that creature just happens to be uh, Nevenwall. Uh, Tevish Zat. It's been a long time since we've seen him. Died during the invasion storyline by totally betraying Urza. But hey, gives us some uh, tokens that can be eventually turned into zombies, or we can sack off another creature or planeswalker to draw cards. And hey, if we manage to sacrifice Nevenwall, we get the additional card because he's our commander. And that minus 10. I don't think we're going to get there. It's not our goal, but it's not impossible. Ugin the Ineffable rounds out our Planeswalker package. We're not running a bunch of colorless spells, but 
hey, being able to exile the top card of our library, turn it into a spirit, which will eventually leave the battlefield, return to our hand, and if everything goes going to plan for us, leave behind a 2-2 zombie. The fact it can destroy colored permanents also is effective for us. Lots of sorcerers, including one of my favorite weapons as of late, awaken the erstwhile. Imagine if you will. Everyone discards their hands. Everyone's got a bunch of 2-2 zombies on the battlefield. Yes, we're going to take our beats. But then if we do our Nevernwall thing, then nobody has creatures except for us. Nobody has cards in hand. Hey, we'll win the game that way. Cabal conditioning, another way to force our opponents to discard their hands. Because um, again, if our opponents can't interact with us, we can do whatever we want. Uh, Demonic Tutor to get our combo pieces. As Grim Tutor as well. Idyllic Tutor. Let's get an enchantment card. Um, this is going to get our Gift of Immortality. Never to return. Um, sorcery speed, but it lets us destroy a creature or planeswalker when you cast Never from your hand. Return exiles a card and gets us a 2 2 zombie from the graveyard. Knight's Whisper, two cards, two life, straight up. Painful Truths. We're running a three color deck, so I like to run Painful Truths where I can. It's just three cards for three mana. Pretty good rate. Reanimate, again, some cheap reanimation spells to bring Nevermore back the turn it dies. And Rise of the Dark Realms. We're sending a lot of things to the graveyard, so let's try to get them all on our side if we can. Excellent finisher. Spark Harvest, another excellent South Gatlet. We can sack a token or our commander to take down a Planeswalker. Um, the ideal target for Spark Harvest is a Planeswalker, of course. And that is my take on Nevenroll. Um, one card that I strongly considered but thought would be kind of unfun was Microsynth Lattice. Um, if you turn everything into an artifact and then blow him up, then everything everything dies, including lands. So I didn't think that was a lot of fun. So I did not put Microsynthlatus in this deck. Um, if your play group uh, makes allowances for such things, go right ahead. Uh, best practice with um, Microsynthlatus is to also run the Dark Steel. Was it Dark Steel? Not Dark Steel set at all, but. Darksteel Forge to turn all of your artifacts into indestructible things. If you get those two cards out and then you blow up the world with Nevenwall, then you're the only person allowed to have permanence. So, I chose not to run that. That's I would not want to face that down face down that scenario, that's for sure. That's just me, but I don't want it to happen to me, so I'm not gonna make it happen to other players. But this is a very sweet, compelling commander. Um, I think the three color commanders in this set are incredibly compelling. Um, as far as the mono color partners, uh, red's got a lot of really, really good ones, honestly. Um, I think red is a huge winner in this set in terms of the partner commanders. Um, especially Togo, uh, the one that gives you rocks whenever you play a land. Um, the zero cost is combo-tastic. Um, Ragraf. Without the name in front of me, I can't pronounce it, but we all know who I'm talking about, the Kobold Zero Cost Commander. So, yeah, Red's got some amazing commanders. Green did pretty good with Kodama. That's nice to see another Kodama creature. Uh, one, we've got North, East, Center, and South. So we're waiting for, we're waiting for one more. There's one more Kodama. Where is it, Wizards? Where's that last Kodama? I want to do Kodama Tribal. And yeah, the so green's got interesting ones. Whites, um, whites didn't get much help. Boros got a lot of help. I like the new Boros uh, commander, by the way. And I'm thinking of uh, building that one up at some point. So um, I do want to experiment with the partners. So I'll try to experiment with the partners first, and then I'll move on to the new Boros commander. Um, that's my rough game plan, but uh, there's lots to work with here. So I'm going to stop the recording and get to work. And everyone have fun with Commander Legends. Um, wish I could join you. Unfortunately, um, I'm working this weekend and I got to buy some uh, winter tires. So with that in mind, I will see you all next time.